What's up everybody and welcome to a new series and in this series we're gonna code a naive base classifier from scratch. So therefore obviously it first makes sense to know uh, how the naive base algorithm actually works. So if you don't know that yet then you can check out my naive base explained series and I will put the link to that into the video description. Okay so that's it for the introduction so now Let's get to the notebook and here I've already prepared some code. Namely, I've already made here the import statements. So we're going to import pandas as PD. So this is the library that we're going to use to build the algorithm. Then here from helper functions, we import prepare data and replace strings. And helper functions is simply a Python file that is in the same folder as this notebook here. And in that file, I simply uh, prepared uh, some functions that help us to prepare the data. So that's just that this notebook here is not too cluttered up. So those things we actually don't need for the algorithm. So you don't really need to know how they work, but you can check out uh, you can check out that file if you want to. Then here uh, next we import pretty print from pretty print. So this we're just gonna use to uh, print to print out a nested dictionary in a more nicely formatted way. And then lastly, from ipython.display, we import image, and that's just to display this image here. So those things we also don't really need for the algorithm. Okay, so that are the import statements. Then here in the next cell, I've prepared the data, and the data set that we're going to be working with is uh, the Titanic data set. So this is a data set that contains information about the passengers of the Titanic accident. So each row that we have here is one specific passenger. And the features that we have are the sex of the passenger, so the passenger is male or female. Then we have the passenger class, so whether the person traveled in first, second or third class. Then we have the age group. And then we have the values, uh, child, teenager, adult, on, and unknown. Then we have here the feature embarked, so this is where the passenger got on board. There we have the values S, C, and Q. S stands for Southampton, C for Sherbrooke, and Q for Greenstown. And then here we have the number of siblings and spouses that the passenger traveled with. And then the last feature is the number of parents or children that the passenger traveled with. And here in the last column, which is called survived, we have our label. So this tells us whether the respective uh, passenger survived or not. So zero, the passenger did not survive and one, the passenger did survive. So that's our train data. And we also have some test data. So let's also print out the head. And here the survived column is obviously missing because, because uh, that's what we want to predict. And those labels then I've uh, stored in a variable called test labels. Let's also print out the head. So those are then the respective labels for this test set. So here, for example, we have passenger ID 892, and here we can see that passenger uh, that, that passenger did uh, not survive. Okay, so that is our data, and now let's see how we can uh, code a naive base classifier that we can use on this data from scratch. Therefore, let me first give you a quick recap of how uh, the naive base algorithm actually works. So this uh, slide here. Or well, this image here is a slide from my naive base explained series. And here we are only currently looking at the two features, sex and passenger class. And we are currently looking at a test passenger three here, which is a female who travels in the first class. So what we now want to do is we want to predict if that passenger survived or not. Therefore, we use this uh, two step process here, which is our uh, naive base algorithm. And here what we do in this first step is create this, uh, so to say, lookup table. And here what we want to do is for each feature, we want to know how the values of that feature are distributed. And we don't just want to know that for uh, the data set as a whole, but we want to know that for each respective uh, class that we have. So for the non-survivors and survivors in this case. and this then we do for all the features. And then in the second step of the algorithm, we're gonna use this lookup table to predict whether this passenger survived or not. And the way that we do that is 
that we look at, this, for example, the total number of uh, non-survivors, which is 549, and then we want to estimate how many of those uh, we, would we expect to have the same combination of values as test passenger free here. So how many of those 549 non-survivors we would expect to be female and driver in the first class. And the way that we do that is that we multiply this 15% here with this 15%, that then with 549, and this gives us the result that there are 12.4 passengers. So out of those 549, we would expect that on average there are 12.4 passengers that are female and travel in the first class. And then we simply do the same thing for uh, the survivors. And then we get the result on an estimate of 93. And now we have those two estimates for the different classes. And whichever estimate is higher, that's going to be our prediction for this test passenger. So in this case here, the number of survivors is higher. Therefore, we would then uh, predict that this passenger here survived. And as you can see here on the table, this passenger really did survive. So that is how uh, the naive base algorithm generally works. And that's now what we want to implement in code. And therefore, we're going to also start with this first step here, which uh, is to create this table. And before we do that, then before we create a function that creates this table, let's first uh, let's first think about how we are actually going to uh, represent this table in code. And what I thought we would could do is to use uh, a dictionary or a nested dictionary. So let's see what that should look like. So let's simply create an example table. So we're going to say example table, and that is going to be uh, a dictionary. So at the first level of this dictionary, we're going to save uh, the features. So in this case, then this would be, uh, for example, sex, and then also passenger class. Uh, and then let me actually open this slide here, so that's easier to see. Uh, and then at the next level then, we again use a dictionary. And here then the keys are the different values of that feature. So for, for, uh, for the feature sex, this would be then female, female and male. And then the values for those keys are then finally the probabilities that we want. So for female, this would be then 15% uh, and 68. So 0 0.15 and 0 0.68. And for male, this would be uh, 85 and 32. So 0 0.85 and 0 0.32. So they, those are the properties for the uh, feature sex. And for passenger class, uh, the key would be the keys would be then one, two, and three. So for example, then one, oops, and uh, the value is then a list that contains the probabilities 15% and 40%. So 0 0.15 and 0 0.40. And then and so on for those uh, other values. So that's how we're going to store the information for those uh, features here. But that's not the only thing that we want to store in this probability table. Namely, we want to also know something about the label. Namely, we want to know the class names and the class counts. So we're going to create some other entries here. One is then the class names. And this is then uh, a list of the class names. So in our case, this would be then uh, 0 and 1. So let's do that. So 0 and 0 and 1. And then lastly, the other thing that we want to know are the class counts. Oops. So uh, brackets. So those would be then 549 and 342. So 549 and 342. So this is what uh, the table should look like. So now uh, let's create or let's build uh, the skeleton of the function that's actually going to build 
this table here from our training data. So let's call this function create table. And what we need to pass in here are, is obviously our train data. So this is going to be a data frame. And then we also need another parameter, which we're going to call label column. So and this we're going to use to specify uh, which column in our data frame here is actually the label. And that's because uh, for the label, we want to store different kinds of information compared to the uh, features. And one thing that I forgot to mention here is that what I want to point out is that here these first elements in these lists, they all refer uh, to class zero in this case. And those second elements here, they refer to class one. So that's going to be important later on. Okay, so now back to our create table function. And what this function then should return is simply uh, the table that we've created. Okay, so this is the skeleton of our function. And now we want to build out uh, the logic for this function. And this will be the topic of the upcoming video. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.